Supporting Comprehension for English Learners, English Learner Literacy Tips of the Month, October, Part 1. Hello, my name is Sandra Elliott, and I'm the English Learner Intervention Support Specialist for the Mississippi Department of Education. This is our third installment of our English Learner Literacy Tips of the Month, and during today's presentation, we'll look at challenges, strategies, and resources for supporting English learners with comprehension. We like to begin each of our presentations with the Mississippi Department of Education's vision, which is to create a world-class educational system that gives students the knowledge and skills to be successful in college and the workforce, and to flourish as parents and citizens. Our mission is to provide leadership through the development of policy and accountability systems so that all students are prepared to compete in the global community. The State Board of Education has a five-year strategic plan, which includes the following. All students are proficient and showing growth in all assessed areas. Every student graduates from high school and is ready for college and career. Every child has access to a high-quality early childhood program. Every school has effective teachers and leaders. Every community effectively uses a world-class data system to improve student outcomes, and every school and district is rated C or higher. Our goals for today's session are to help you to understand comprehension challenges for English learner students, review rules for teaching comprehension to English learner students, discuss an explicit comprehension strategy, review multiple comprehension resources to use in the classroom to support English learners with comprehension. Comprehension and English learners. What is comprehension? When a student understands the meaning of the text, they comprehend. Comprehension matters because it is the end goal of reading and with strong comprehension, students are also able to draw conclusions about what they have read. What are comprehension challenges for English learners? English learners who struggle with comprehension may read more slowly, have a hard time following a text or story, have a hard time picking out important events, feel frustrated have problems mastering new concepts, and struggle to complete assignments. Supporting Comprehension for English Learners. This chart gives us a way to think about the support your English learners need. Beginning English learners need instruction and support in phonemic awareness and basic decoding, vocabulary development, and comprehension strategies and skills. Intermediate English learners' instruction and support in phonemic awareness and basic decoding would be more specifically related to sounds that are different from their primary language. They also require continued instruction and support in vocabulary development and comprehension strategies and skills. While advanced and mainstreamed English learners will generally not need support in phonemic awareness and basic decoding, they will need ongoing instruction and support in vocabulary development and comprehension strategies and skills. The big three rules for supporting comprehension for English learners are to build background knowledge, to teach vocabulary explicitly, to teach comprehension frequently. We will discuss these three in more detail in the upcoming slides. The first rule to build background knowledge, we should keep in mind when we build on existing knowledge, students may already possess content knowledge that they aren't able to demonstrate yet in English because do, they do not yet have the necessary vocabulary to express themselves. Building students' background knowledge may be necessary for students with limited or interrupted schooling who may need you as the teacher to provide context for historical or cultural topics before starting a new lesson. So it is important to preview the text and look for references students might need explained to successfully understand the lesson. 
Before reading the text, make a point to give students a tour of the text, pointing out helpful text features and explaining how to use these features to find important information. Once students know how to recognize and use these tools, they'll be able to preview text independently. Picture walks can be done with fiction and nonfiction books. Look through the books with students, taking time to point out pictures, illustrations, and other graphic features. Ask students to think about pictures and identify what they notice and how these details might be important to the story. Give students a brief, simple outline of a reading assignment or an oral discussion before starting the lesson. This will help them to identify the important information as they listen to or read the text. The second rule is to teach vocabulary explicitly. When we do this, we should try to choose vocabulary words students will need to know to support their reading and provide simple student-friendly definitions and corresponding motions to help students master the vocabulary. Remember that English learner students will need explicit instruction to understand the meaning of signal and directional words in addition to the targeted vocabulary necessary for the text. Once students are familiar with the new words definition, you can have students connect their new vocabulary to the pictures they see in the text. For a great strategy for practicing key vocabulary with English learners using pictures, watch our September Literacy video tips on visual literacy. In addition to teaching key vocabulary, teachers should also teach students to make themselves aware when they come across words they don't know, so they can underline, highlight, or list those words. The teacher can then work with each English learner student to provide individualized, targeted vocabulary instruction. When we provide students with the opportunity to practice new words, the goal is to make sure that students can define the word, recognize when to use that word, understand multiple meanings of the word, and decode and spell the word. Finally, students need opportunities to use the words in a safe, structured environment. The teachers should provide structured peer talk opportunities for students, model using the word correctly in lessons and conversations throughout the day, and provide opportunities for students to hear and practice the words in other contexts to better assist students in making connections to the word and how to use it in multiple contexts. Our third big rule is to check comprehension frequently. Some things to remember when checking comprehension frequently are Comprehension checks can be informal. Students do not always need to take a final assessment to check their understanding of a concept. Consider what you want students to understand and determine alternate ways students can show their understanding within the range of their English proficiency. So for example, if you want to check a student's understanding of the concept of a story sequence, you could provide images from different parts of the story and then have the student organize them in the correct sequential order. When testing student comprehension, questions need to be carefully crafted using simple sentences and key vocabulary and across three levels, the literal level, the interpretive level, and the applied level. In our September English Learner Literacy Tips webinar on oral language strategies, we discussed questioning to extend vocabulary practice. Extending questions also supports comprehension. We should follow up comprehension questions by asking student questions that will require them to analyze, interpret, or explain what they have read. Examples of these questions would be, do you agree? Why or why not? How do you think the character felt? Why? Or, what might happen if? These questions allow students the opportunity to practice higher order thinking and give the teacher more insight into the student's thought processes. 
Using graphic organizers is both a way for English learners to organize information as well as a way to help ELs highlight and identify the most important information which they need to focus on to successfully master the targeted comprehension content. When we give students opportunities to show what you know, we're giving students opportunities to present their knowledge and understanding in a way where they're not hindered by limited English proficiency. Students could act out what they understand, use pictures to show their understanding, make a model to show their understanding, or show their understanding through another assignment or activity which would be appropriate for the student. Finally, we can support the comprehension of English learners by summarizing the longer passage which students are working with to give them the opportunity for success. Summarizing also applies to the student because when English learners can summarize, they are able to show their understanding or gaps in their understanding of the targeted skill. We want to explicitly teach comprehension skills. These strategies not only help our English learners, but are useful for all students. These should include introducing the comprehension strategy or skill through examples. Discuss how, when, where, and why the strategy or skills are used. Label, define, model, and explain the strategy or skill. Give students opportunities to practice using the strategy with a peer as they apply it to a short, simple paragraph. Explicitly teaching comprehension skills. Additional strategies for English learner students. Identify vocabulary words that you think might be difficult for students to understand when they read the text. Write English learner friendly definitions for each. Keep them simple and brief. Model think alouds. Demonstrate fix up strategies. Partner English learners with more dominant English speakers and ask each student to take a turn reading and thinking aloud with short passages. Comprehension Strategies Repeated Interactive Read-Alouds Research has demonstrated that the most effective read-alouds are those where children are actively involved in asking and answering questions and making predictions rather than passively listening. Growth is related to how frequently students engage in analytic talk. Analytic talk involves making predictions or inferences that explain a character's motivation or connect events from different parts of the story. Teachers prompt students to engage in analytical thinking by making comments that model such thinking and then asking thoughtful questions. Repeated interactive read-alouds. Teachers need to read sophisticated stories and nonfiction books for repeated interactive read-alouds in favor of reading easier, predictable books. Sophisticated picture books include stories where readers must infer characters' motivations and thoughts and connect them to actions, like cause and effect, and they have a rich vocabulary. Books such as Henny Penny, Owl Moon, and Oonga Boonga can be contrasted with predictable books in which readers do not need to infer character motivation, feelings, or thoughts in order to enjoy the repeated words and actions. Repeated Interactive Read-Alouds In our first read-aloud, we want to give the book an introduction, show the front cover, and sometimes the back cover, and the title page. It is not recommended that children identify book parts such as the front and back cover or top and bottom of the page, tell what the author or illustrator does, or discuss the dedication page during a first read. These activities divert children's attention away from the main goal of a first read aloud, which is to enjoy a good story by focusing on its meaning. When reading a book during a first read, use expression, gestures, and dramatic pauses. Variations in the pace of reading and plenty of eye contact. Before reading the book aloud, select five to ten tier two vocabulary words or phrases from the book that you will highlight or define during reading, which will be 
critical to understanding the story. Tier 2 vocabulary words are what we call the just right words, words that students may not know immediately but can learn them fairly easily. They are words that will help students understand all the implications of the story. We can introduce them by pointing to illustrations, gesturing dramatically, or inserting a few definitions. In addition, we can make comments as we read that reveal what the main character is thinking or feeling and ask a follow-up analytical question based on our comments. During reading, make comments that demonstrate analytic thinking at three or four junctures in which ideal readers would make inferences about a character's thoughts, feelings, or motivations, or predict up upcoming events. When commenting about the story, use language to signal mental activity by using the phrase, I'm thinking. Students' answers to questions following the teacher's analytical comments are more likely to be related to the story. This teaching sequence provides a deliberate and systematic approach towards expanding comprehension. After reading the entire book, ask a why question, requiring children to make inferences about and explain several story events. Then use follow-up probing questions to support children's ability to answer broader explanation questions. Second read-alouds occur a day or two after the first read-aloud. The purpose is to enrich the student's comprehension of the story and provide further opportunities for them to engage in analytic talk. During second book introductions, remind students that they have read this book before and that they will remember some things from the book. Prior to reading, continue to highlight the same vocabulary. However, in a second read, the teacher might also need to verbally define words which the reader noticed students struggled with understanding during the first read. A brief introduction should be made that reminds students that they know the characters and some things the character does. We should also ask questions about the characters and the problem. During the second read, continue modeling analytic comments during reading, but also ask more frequent questions to help the students make additional inferences. In the first read, the teacher's comments focused on getting students to infer what the main character is thinking and feeling or to connect main events with their causes. Therefore, the comments and questions during the second read might focus on the other character's motivations or thoughts. Just as in a first read, prepare students to answer analytical questions by first modeling analytic comments that may explain some but not all of the information needed to adequ adequately answer the question. Like first reads, end second reads by asking another explanation question, such as why. You might also ask children about something that might happen beyond the story, such as what would happen if... Third interactive read-alouds differ from second and first read-alouds because they integrate a guided reconstruction of the story with the teacher's reading of some of the story text. Reconstructions are retelling of story events along with explanations about what caused those events and what characters are thinking during the events. Therefore, guided reconstructions are more effective than mere retellings because students use analytical talk to explain why events occurred. Again, the teacher will acknowledge that students are familiar with the book and its content and will ask questions about the title or characters by saying something like, We've read this book two times before, so I know you know its title. What is it? Allow students to respond and then prompt children to reconstruct information by asking, what other details do we see on the cover that we know are important for the story? We could also invite children to identify the problem and describe the so solution. Be careful in this stage not to ask so many questions that students become overwhelmed. It's important to use general prompts in guiding reconstruction of text. Before reading some pages of the story, point to the illustration and ask, what's happening here? 
Use this prompt as you show a double spread illustration. Sometimes you can use the second question. Do you remember what will happen next before turning to the next illustration? Only use this question when the next event is casually related to the event the students have just recalled. After students reconstruct the events on a page, read the text. On longer books, reread many pages of the text and have students reconstruct only a few pages. On shorter books, allow them to reconstruct more of the story and read only a few pages of the text. The length of the book and the students' responses should guide the teacher's decisions of whether to read more or engage children in more reconstruction. In third reads, you should continue to insert verbal explanations of words, point to illustrations, and make dramatic motions. To further emphasize vocabulary in a third read, you should extend some word meanings to a familiar text, but not one included in the story. Across three days of reading the same book, the strategies used in repeated Interactive read-alouds provide the students with an opportunity to engage more actively in the reading experience. During a first read, teachers take a more active role by reading the text and making comments, and students are actively listening and sometimes commenting or answering questions. During a second read, children participate more by verbally answering questions and commenting more frequently. In the third read aloud, children take a highly active role as they reconstruct the story with teacher guidance. Resources for English Learner Comprehension Text Features Students should be taught how to use the following tools when reading an informational text. Titles, headings, bold, italicized print, captions, sidebars, maps, graphs, pictures, and bullets. Graphic organizers help English learner students separate the important information they need to remember from the rest of the passage or text. Teachers can give students blank graphic organizers or can provide students with already completed organizers, depending on the student's English proficiency level. Artistic Summary When we ask students to create an artistic summary, we read a piece of text and have students portray their text summaries through art projects, such as creating a collage, timeline, mobile, poster, or cartoon strip. Teachers might find that depending on their English proficiency and academic progress, English learner students might be able to accurately relate their understanding through detailed images, providing the teacher with insight into the student's true understanding. Have students present their artistic interpretations along with an oral presentation to the class. Teacher questioning prompts to assist students in creating their artistic summary include but aren't limited to, what was the focus of the reading selection? Think of all the parts in the story and put them together as if you were going to tell another person about the story. What's important and essential to the text? Tell me about some of the important ideas that struck you. What details are most and least significant? How can you use key ideas to condense the information in this story? Which words helped you get the gist of the story? Story Wheel. This activity can be completed when students have finished reading an assignment. To create a story wheel, we ask students to list the important events in the story. Emphasize that the events should be the beginning, middle, and end of the selection. Next, have the students narrow the list of events to the seven most important. Provide students with the blank story wheel. Students write the story title and the author's name in a wedge of the story wheel. 
Students should then illustrate a story event in each of the story wheel wedges so that when the story wheel is completed, they have a summary of the story. Students could also include the written event in each of the story wedges. Have students share their story wheels with their classmates. Somebody wanted but so. Have students fold a sheet of paper into fourths and write the following headings on the four sections. Somebody wanted but so. Using a story that the students have read, have students complete their individual charts by writing a statement or drawing an illustration under each section. Under somebody, the students will identify the character. Under wanted, they will describe the character's goal. Under but, they will describe a conflict that hinders the character. Under so, they would describe the resolution to the conflict. Remind students to focus on information that is most important to the retelling. For a variation on this lesson, Place four hula hoops on the floor and label each hoop with one of the headings, Somebody Wanted But So. After reading a story, have the students stand inside the hoops and summarize each corresponding aspect as they hop through the hoops. For English learners, this is especially helpful since it will assist them in practicing the English vocabulary needed to retell the story's essential elements. Quick write exit slips. Exit slips allow teachers a quick glimpse into their students' comprehension of a previously taught lesson. Teachers can use a quick write exit slip to have English learners respond to a prompt related to the lesson. This will show any gaps the student might have or how the teacher might need to scaffold or reteach the lesson to help make connections for the student. Here we see three examples of different types of exit slips. Resources used for this PowerPoint came from articles written and available on the Coloring Colorado and Reading Rockets websites. Thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. We hope that you have found it helpful. If you have any further questions or would like professional development for your staff, please contact our office. Our English learner team is happy to support you in any way that we can.